Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. His name is Abi, and he has a co com company that he is just, that does funneling and has many services on how to help the little guy, you know, get ahead of the big guy. Like, we have a lot of companies like Amazon and Target and, and Walmart and all these companies that are really hurting the small businessman. And Abi's here today to talk about different ways, different techniques techniques and solutions that are feasible and affordable, and they can actually help the little businesses grow and actually become really successful monetarily and be able to reach their goals that they have set for themselves. So Avi, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to see you. And I really enjoy this topic because it's something that in our society, people are just, you know, struggling. You know, you the small business owner, you know, is, is struggling because they have oh so much money to spend. They're trying to get ahead of these big corporations, you know, they're able to put prices really low. They, you know, these companies, these small companies have a lot of great things to offer. You have a lot of mom and pop stores stores and stuff and stores have been here forever. So, you know, tell us a little about funneling and about yourself and your company and, and how all these things tie in and, and could actually help people with businesses. Uh, absolutely, Stacey. Thanks a lot for that introduction. Uh, so I'm Abby. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'm founder and CEO of causalfunnel.com and we offer uh, data science and AI tools for the little businesses or small and medium-sized businesses to compete with, you know, big tech and Amazon's and, you know, 10 cents of the world. Uh, the way Causal Funnel works is uh, if you look at your, uh, if you have an online store, and if you look at your business, basically your business checkout or customers visiting the store, it's basically a funnel. They come to this website, they browse different products, then they add to cart, or if you are booking an appointment, they click on your like lead form and then like hit submit or, or take, take the checkout and then leave, right? Now there are a lot of variables between them coming to the site and then finally doing the checkout or submitting that lead form. So that's where we help uh, the small and medium sized businesses by getting them you know better conversion rate, uh, optimizing their website for better landing pages uh, doing A-B tests to see which images, which pages, which clicks uh, would be more beneficial for the longer run in terms of sales and customer retention. And that's basically the whole funnel, right? So if you're suffering from say, hey, I have very low visitor count, how can I uh, you know, improve that? Then we give you like, uh, you know, our you know, ad optimization software. You also have uh, help with SEO where we can get you more traffic and traffic that actually converts. Yes. Uh, not just like just random traffic, right? Um, then the second aspect of it is that once the traffic is on the site, what are you doing to get them converting at a better rate, right? If mm -hmm. say, if you have like 10,000 visitors, but only say 20 sales a month, that's pretty mm -hmm. low number, right? So how can you get that 20 to 200 uh, that's where our middle of the funnel tools come in, like, you know, user segmentation on real time, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, AI shopping buddy that would help uh, the customer uh, make better choices uh, while he's on the, on the site. As you know, in this day and age, the attention span of consumer is really small, right? And everybody yeah. is competing for that same attention span because we have only 24 hours in a day. Right. So how do you grab that customer's attention in a better way using like real time user segmentation and AI shopping buddy? And then we have the end of the funnel. We have tools like customer lifetime value models, which explicitly go after customers who have like high retention rate, at least for your business. Right. right. So we you can prioritize uh, going after those customers because in the long run, they would end up paying more, more to you. So yeah. and these help a lot, uh, you know, for small and medium sized businesses, because it's very hard for them to actually go out in the market and get all these tools, because very few companies provide them at a better rate. So that's where we come in. And we provide all these tools to, to make your business better and sell better. 
You know, I think that's so important. And the one thing that you said in the beginning, which is really important, is that a lot of people don't know their audience or right. they have the wrong audience. And yes. they, in their mind, they're, they're advertising their product or their service and they're wondering why you know, they're not getting the return, you know, that they're looking for and that percentage of buyers, but the right. people that they're, they're marketing to are not really interested, you know, somehow they might've clicked on yeah. it once or twice, they got on their list or, you know, but they've grown this audience, but it's not the right audience. And, yeah. you know, so, you know, maybe you, you can explain to people how they can, you know, what are some ways from your own experience that how people could figure out who their audience is, and then being able yeah. to make changes so they could actually go after the right audience and actually start selling their product or service. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's a great question, Stacy. And we have seen that uh, problem a lot. So when I was at Groupon, we'd work with a lot of small and medium-sized businesses, right? So I, mm -hmm. I was at Groupon for like uh, close to two and a half to three years, around two and a half years as a senior data scientist there. And we would look at different user segments for different small and medium-sized businesses, right? And one thing we observed is that um, they, a lot of businesses get a lot of first-time visitors. Mm -hmm. uh, and they also have these returning visitors who really like the product and they're coming back to the customer again and again. But there's a significant gap in conversion between returning visitors and first-time visitors. So there is kind of like a, like a kind of you can you can feel like there is kind of a valley, right? Yeah. Uh, or or like a, a, a kind of a roadblock wherein a first-time customer has some roadblock in becoming a, a paying customer and then coming back to the business again and again to buy. And a couple of reasons for that are, you know. Uh, the landing page is not aligned with whatever keyword they searched on Google or like uh, or, or any any Facebook page they came from or any other forum they were on. So mm -hmm. the landing page do not align with that search intent. Right. The other uh, big thing that we have seen is that they are doing price shopping, right? So they search on Google, say, hey, uh, give me red shoes or yeah. I want to buy red shoes. Now they would open multiple tabs and then they'll just do a shopping like price comparison and mm -hmm. then go with like a combination of better comfort, better yeah. style and pricing, right? So if we can hit or target that customer at that time that, yeah. hey, uh, you know, I know you're kind of price shopping. We have a great deal for you. Uh, maybe this red shoe, this particular red shoe, if you buy in like next 60 minutes, we can, you know, give you a great service or we can ship you in like a day or like right. next four hours, or we can give you a 10% off. That mm -hmm. kind of uh, targeting helps a lot, right? right. Uh, so knowing the, knowing the search intent of the customer and acting accordingly, right? That's the second thing. The third thing which we have seen is that they might have done a lot of social media, a lot of SEO, but the keyword that they're targeting, that they targeted in those social media and SEO is different from what the site is actually selling. So let me give yeah. you an example. Uh, we, have, we have a customer, when they came to us, they were basically going after like, you know, herbal tea and, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. But you know what they advertised or what they had a lot of links coming for? They had links coming for like herbal tea t-shirts. Oh. <laughs> so if, if a person is going to buy herbal tea, why would he come to your site and buy the t-shirts, right? So yeah. this this is an extreme case of mismatch, but you can yeah, even yeah. a subtle difference like that can make your conversion rate from 4% to 0.1%, right? right? So that mismatch in intent then uh, the the last thing is not getting the right ICP, right? Uh, and even if you get the right ICP, ICP is basically ideal customer profile, right? Uh, who are you selling to, right? If you're just, uh, you know, uh, if you're not matching the, if you got the ICP right, but you're not matching the ICP with their buying intent, yes. uh, and you're say just writing, say, 
five ways you can you can sleep better at night right and right. then you you like write like okay this is one herbal tea herbal tea a herbal tea b herbal tea c right yeah. uh the customer will come just read it and leave right so mm -hmm. you have to match the search intent and the icp with the buying intent for example um a better way to do this would be something like hey uh this is what we found when you use when you use my herbal tea brand a this is what we found how you can sleep better how you can you know uh keep be more refreshed in your mornings yeah. mm -hmm. how you can be like more energetic all that right and you yes. can list all these downs with like citations right okay you no know, this is right. our case study this is that and that would actually that aligns well with the buying intent of the customer if someone is reading that yeah. you know if 100 people came at least 5 to 10 would be convinced to buy your product because you have written uh, a thing which aligns with your with their buying intent right? right so that's the other thing that's that that's the other thing that's that's important to keep in mind right and so when you come to us we look at all these uh, these uh, criteria we look at your landing pages, your different images, your buttons, and see what is helping in conversion, what is not helping in conversion, and right. uh, get you started on that. Yeah. I think I think a lot of people, you know, um, they don't understand SEO, and they don't understand when it comes to the keywords, how important they are. And they even had, you know, it was a um, a debate, you know, is SEO, you know, dead, you know, so they had those articles coming on. And, you know, I, yeah. I believe that we need SEO, you know, we, right. it's like, you know, in order for Google to understand when the spiders come through, the, you yeah. know, what your products are and what your website's about, we have to have those keywords. I think they're yeah. important, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, they are right. Uh, you know, uh, SEO, you know, you know, is is never gonna be dead because, uh, you know, there there would always be some form of like you know search, right? Uh, you know, it may change its shape, like you know, it may go to like chatbot search or like search inside the chatbot, but yeah. there would always be this case where someone types in a question an answer comes up and then from that answer there's a link to your site so right. basically the search optimization is always going to be there the shape and the form will change right? right so and and to get that link you will have to have keywords like you know otherwise how would they understand that this website is important for this answer right, right. so you're absolutely right that it's going to be there the form of it will change absolutely, right? As people become more savvier, as algorithms become uh, better, the the form of it will change, of course. But there has to be uh, contextual keywords that will map the search intent with the final result. Yeah. Now, what, what, when it comes to funneling, you know, funneling can take a long time to do for someone who is not experienced in it. You know, right. you can understand how to do it, but you could sit there for hours and hours and hours, you know, trying to create a productive funnel. And sometimes it, it could be an okay funnel because you're doing it and you don't know everything that needs to be done because yeah. it has to be done. Yeah. It has to be meticulous and it has to be done a specific way. Now, yeah. when it comes to your company, you have different services. You said you have your AI based and you, you create funnels, you know, that actually target the right audience and, and it's yeah. going after, you know, it's going after, like, you know, kind of doing like alpha better, seeing what works, yeah. what doesn't work. And um, so tell us a little about that, how your company is unique compared to other funnel companies, because there are funnel companies out there and they're not always that easy to use. They're very technical, yeah. you know, so, yeah. you know, it's, it's not that easy. So, you know, what is so unique about your company? Yeah. So there are a couple of things. That's a great question. Uh, again, like you, you hit the nail on the head. Like, yes, there are products out there, but a, they are costlier and they are also like much more technical. The way that makes us different is um, we we go with the we, we go with the data where the data takes us. Right? We are not gonna basically just like give you a fixed framework that okay, do this this at this your form would be better no uh, i don't think uh anybody has a magic formula like that uh yes it may work these cookie cutter approaches may work for certain industries but they are not universal 
So the way we work is, you know, we give you an A-B test dashboard, right? And we launch different landing pages based on your feedback, right? So when you come to us for a week or two weeks, depending upon how much traffic we ha you have, we gather your data, just raw data, where your users are coming from, what they're clicking on, what images they are seeing, what is the scroll speed, uh, what buttons they are clicking, how many clicks between their, their coming to the site and final sale, all of that. Yeah. Right, and then using that, we generate these user segments, right, and see what is the conversion path and rate for different user segments that you have. And then we consult with you as to for different user segments, what can be an effective uh, strategy, right? To like either incentivize them to purchase more or like um, get them a better landing page experience. And then we launch those based on the, the discussions we have. And then we just, again, gather data. We do A-B test. We try different versions of the landing page, different incentives. And the data basically guides us that, okay, this is a better landing page, this is a better incentive, this is a better wording on the on the on on the on the checkout, right? So right. It, it's basically very intuitive. The data tells you that you you can see the number on the dashboard that okay, this is clearly performing well, this version A is performing well and version B, right? Um right. Now, going back to other funnels, right? Typically what they do is they will give you a landing page and then like there will be a form or like a purchase link to your final product. That's that's kind of very simplistic because the user is not getting a holistic perspective of your all your products, right? right. So that's why uh, having a more A-B test-based strategy get, gets you to a funnel that is better optimized and more scalable and also robust. I think that's really important. And I, I think once you understand your 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 um audience and you right. really have you really understand, you know, what what people are purchasing your product, how many times they're coming to your website, what yeah. they're looking for, what products they're buying the most of, you can really yeah. start to revamp your entire website, you know, and, exactly. and actually, you know, start selling more products, you know, based on the, the data that you're receiving right. because Right. Sometimes I think I think you know a lot of people that have businesses they put they do the things that they like and they don't pay enough, enough attention exactly. to what their audience likes and yes. I think that's where a fault comes in too. Yes, exactly. So um, that's that's a great point and that happens so much so often that it's it's almost like ridiculous, right? So there is a concept um, uh, uh, called hippo and it's called highest person's opinion. Right. So you have like a 30 person team who is running a business. And if this owner says, I don't like this image, why did you guys put it? Even though the data says that this image will make you convert more. Yeah. People have to change it. Right. So that's why that's why being guided by data and having a funnel that is being guided by data is absolutely important. Rather than going by our intuitions or our likes or dislikes. You yes. should just let the data speak for itself, right? And not the hippo or, or anybody else basically uh, and bias that opinion. And that could probably even help you with your ads too. When you're Once you know your audience and you know what they like, then you yeah. could actually, and, and you have all that data, you can actually yeah. start really advertising properly, you know, instead yeah. of spending, you know, wasting away so much money. There are people who create, you know, they create these great ads, but they're, they're sending it to the wrong audience or yeah. they're not using the right image. Like you yes. said, because, you know, the owner might like this image and, you yes. know, and <laughs> they're, you know, the people there that want to buy are looking yeah. for something completely different. So it's, it's, you know, the more data you could have and the more you can construe, it's just, it's, it's really important to have that. To, it's like vital. It's vital for survival. Absolutely. 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 Uh, you know, I can give you a real, real quick example. Um, sure. One of, um, one of our customers, they, they're in Florida. They do like kayaking and, you know, diving and all. They have a dive shop, right? Uh, we discovered that there are two big segments and one segment is buying at half the rate of the other. And just for the simple reason that they come in, their products are great, their services are great, but they have such a higher price point, right? Yes. And they're justified to have that price point, but they have such a higher price point that basically they are kind of adding a, a very big barrier for the first time visitor yeah. to even try their product. 
and right. they have a very high returning rate. So what we did was, if you're a first time visitor to that shop, basically we know that using our different strategies that we have, mm -hmm. um, we will basically give you an extra bundle on top of what the already product we are giving you. Right. And that kind of boosted their conversion rate by quite a lot, right? Yes. And also that also affected their like, you know, lower end of the funnel where their return rate also increased because the first time visitor, when they saw they were getting so much, so many things out of just this much money, right. they would keep coming back to them for that great service they had, right? So, you know, so once you use that data that you saw, and then yeah. make your decisions based on that. It's amazing how much improvement you can you can get. And I've seen companies do that, and I, I like that. You know, they they'll have like a welcome coupon on the front, or they'll do like yes. a you know wheel, spin you know, wheel. For, yes, yeah, a spin wheel, you know, yes. and uh, and then they'll 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 target those first time buyers, and you know, it's uh and and what also is a great tactic is a lot of times they'll ask you to put your phone number in, and you know, yeah. then they'll text and advertisements to them. And I don't know if the yeah. consumer like that or not, but it's great because now you, you got your data, you know, what, what type of person is this? What kind of consumer am I dealing with? Yeah. They, if they react in a positive way, you're starting to understand who's coming to my site, you know, what kind of first time buyers are coming, what, you know, and you know, who the, who are the people that are coming consistently to buy over yeah. and over again? And yeah. what are they buying? You know, what do they yeah. like? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think um, so. The one thing that I would just uh, mention here, like, and which which you brought up, that whether the consumers like it or not, I think that's why it's very important to be strategic about what incentives to you give to what what uh, customer segments. You should not be giving the same incentive to everybody, right? But, which basically cheapens your products, and it also basically. Uh, takes you away from building a consumer base that's that that has higher return rate, right? Yes. And, and it's also like kind of loyal to you, right? Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's why it's important to drive that decision uh, using data and not like blindly give one particular incentive or the other to everybody. Um, right. For example, uh, the dive shop we talked about, we didn't give this to everybody. We have right. tech basically something called deep ID using that we can know that okay how many times you came to the website without storing cookies and you know uh, it doesn't follow you everywhere on the internet like you know yeah. <laughs> cookies do so that's why it's cookie less uh, but yeah. it gets the job done right um, right so so that's why it's important to guide your decisions through through these these data techniques Yes, because, you know, a lot of times companies, if they don't, if they don't do things like this, they, you know, a lot of companies won't survive the first year. You know, you see exactly. so many companies go out of business the first year and it's yeah. because these are the strategies that they're lacking and yeah. it's, it's vital for survival and to, and to really make a profitable business and grow. Absolutely. And that's why it's so important to have these like AI and data science tools in the very beginning, because you have a lot less money. You have a lot less time. Every decision that you make is make or break, right? You will basically, if you don't make the right decisions in the beginning, you, you might actually have to shut your business down. So that's why it's absolutely important. It's more important than big tech. Yeah. For the SMBs to have these tools. Otherwise, you know, it's it's a the competition is becoming tougher and tougher. Like I said, there are so many other options out there, and everybody has a limited attention span because yes. we only have 24 hours in a day, right? So right. Uh, basically you cannot compete for that attention unless you have all these data-driven tools. No, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I agree with you. I, I I don't, you know, I think the biggest problem is, is that people just don't understand what funneling is. You know, when, you know, there are a lot of people yeah. that understand certain parts of business, they, you know, they may know how to manage a business. They may know how to run a business, but when it comes to the, the tech side, which is so vital in right. our society, Today because right. that's you know that it's you know online is really taken over you know people yeah. go online now to buy more than they do you know in stores you know yeah. it's easier it's faster it's convenient and a yeah. lot of times you know, you've noticed but you go into a store they have less they're they're selling less products in the store and you go online and they have so much more to choose yeah. from so it's always the customer 
Exactly. And again, great point here. And you can you can see the reason why, right? Because there's no storage cost for them. They can store anywhere they want. They don't have to look good and all that, right? And they can ship from anywhere. So yeah. it makes that that business also more efficient and like get their margins better as well, right? So it helps everybody, right? You are you as a consumer are better placed because you can get by it like in a convenience by one just one click yeah. convenience of a click and then that that business is also operating at a better better margin because they don't have to pay a huge sum of money for a better location better beautification of the store and all that right so it, it's actually a win-win but where it becomes a problem is that uh you know when like these tools right are not available to everybody so it, it right. basically becomes a winner takes all because they have better data, they can make better decisions, they can run higher powered algorithms, right? Because all of these algorithms are also data dependent, right? Yeah. Uh, the more data you give them, the better they become, right? Same for AI bots, right? So mm -hmm. that's when that's when it becomes like a very competitive space when these data driven decisions are not made, yeah. And it seems like if you have the right data and you have and you are doing your SEO properly and you have these funnels intact, you could actually really climb up Google and go really, yes. you know, hit that first page. You know, it could by yeah. doing it the right way. You know, it seems yeah. like you could actually have an easier time because you want to get on that first page. You want to be one of those first people that yeah. they see. When they type a keyword in. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, uh, you know, and on top of that, right? Uh, you know. Even your PPC, like you know, your ads become better because Google doesn't want their search experience to be like just like you know salesy, right? Yeah. Ads everywhere. So if you're not uh, performing well organically, you would have to end up paying more to be on that you know sales box, right? That right. ad box, right? Um, right. So it, it helps your PPC as well as well as your social media presence, right? Um, you know, um, if, you're, if you're doing a great job, right, on your site uh, and on, on like your organic traffic, yeah. basically people notice that and then they would organically give you links from their, their like say Facebook page or their Instagram that, hey, I went there, this was such a great product I bought, you know, these guys are really, really good, you know, right? So. You, you pick up a lot of organic traffic as well this way, you know. Right, right. I think yeah. it's it's so important, you know. Um, these are things that people really have to look at. And it, is it, you know, the program that you developed, is it easy for first-time buyers? Like, you know, when they, when, when they come on, like not first-time buyers, but first-time users, you know, right. is it? Is it an easy service? You know, how does it actually work? So someone comes yeah. onto your website, they they want to start doing funnels, they want to start, you know, getting their their products, you know, known right. and, and on the internet. You know, yeah. what's the process that that they yeah. go through? Yeah. Uh, so the process is uh, we haven't uh, uh, done it like uh, one click install and you know pay like you know, pay to play. It's more like consultative. So you just like. Uh, click on our free trial button, we'll get an email, and then we'll, you know, our product team will contact you, right? And then we add our tool in the backend of your site. We gather the data for, for a week or two weeks, depending upon how much traffic you have. Yeah. And then in the next call, we basically sit with you and go through your current funnel, like where people are dropping off, what are the different user segments, where you need to improve, and then, you know, based on your feedback, we'll, we'll try to go after different user segments. For example, if you have a particular user segment in a particular geolocation who, has, who are converting, say, one third of the rate of your average population, you know, we can go after them because like the lowest hanging fruit, you know, there would definitely be some form or the other where we can improve that conversion rate unless there, it's a drastically bad, there's something drastically bad going on, right? So yeah. we go after these four or five user segments. Uh, we run the A-B test for a couple of weeks. We improve your conversion numbers. Uh, if, if, if it doesn't work, we'll try different A-B tests and eventually yeah. your numbers will go up. And then, you know, we get you in, we give you all the other tools, right? So we started with the A-B test and user segments. 
then we also give you landing page optimization, right? So you can optimize your landing page. Then we also give you, if you need AI shopping body, wherein, you know, you can use that to basically um, improve your, you know, customer service and also capture leads that way, right? Because one of the very popular questions is like, uh, can I, you know, do you have any offers going on? Right, right to the bot or like can i get this product customized right get my name written here or like can i get a different color right so yes. these kind of questions actually also help you capture more leads who may yeah. not convert right away but if right. you follow through with emails and texts they would eventually convert right um yes. and then uh, you know so this basically takes care of your middle of your funnel and then we have like, if you want to also do your top of the funnel, we have SEO and ads optimization software, which yeah. basically uh, takes your ads data and SEO data, does the analysis and looks for keywords where you are better placed to have better PPC rate, right? You don't have to pay an arm and a leg to yeah. basically get those clicks from Google. And the last product tool that we have is basically a customer lifetime value, wherein if your churn rate is higher, we can basically look at that data and see which segment you can go after to slowly improve your, improve your retention rate. Yeah, I think you know one of the things I, I see a lot, people don't realize how many lead magnets they actually have. You know, yeah. if you go on, if you go on your even the data from your website, but even if you go on social media, who's right. following? You, who's on your LinkedIn, you know, yes. there, there's so many ways to get information on the people that are interested and come up with tools and, and funnels that you could apply and see which one right. works and which one doesn't. But, you know, right. people don't realize like when I brought up to my clients, you know, you have tons of lead magnets. They look at me confused, like, no, I don't. I'm like, <laughs> no. But, you know, people have hundreds and hundreds of lead magnets that you're never aware yes. of it. You know, what are your feelings about that? What do you think from what your own you know, your own experience is? Oh, that's a great point. You know, I I agree. You know, we uh we overlook a lot of signals and a lot of uh basically um a lot of these uh you know lead magnets that we actually can very well use, right? For example, one of the things that we are doing is, uh, you know, we also started small, right? So there, it was a two person company when we started three and a half years back. Now yeah. we are close to 14 people company, uh, you know, backed by some, you know, good uh, angel investors. Um, yeah. So one of the things that we have noticed is uh, basically people ignore a lot of their social media cues, right? Uh, yes. You know, like which, um, which kind of posts are working well, which are not, uh, you know, which kind of uh, posts actually get you leads versus which are not, who is, which follower is actually uh, getting you uh, more conversion which, versus which is not, right? So if we can, if we can be more cognizant and mindful of this, I think uh, we would make better decisions uh, for the business as well. You're right, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. I, I I think I think people overlook a lot of things. Like they don't yeah. realize, you know, how many opportunities there is to grow within their business. And I think right. again, it goes back to what we were saying. It's very hard if you're trying to be a one person or a two person business in the beginning, and you have a unlimited yes. bu budget. It's really hard, you it's know. Really but hard, yes. If you, if you have someone actually, and you can you can you know that can look at this data, you know, and you can you know analyze it, you know, and and you know focus, you know, and make connections, and you know maybe you know create some types of advertisement, you can you can really grow. It's like you know I think one of the biggest things is that you have to go after the, you know once you get a reaction, you know, from the data, yeah. you, you need to go after that, you know, and yeah. some people. Don't go after it. I, I've been, I've seen businesses where they have people that they could have for potential clients, you know, that are reoccurring and they just don't go after it. They, they, they kind of leave the store and they don't, they don't send them emails. They don't say, you know, Hey, you yeah. got a product in your, in your cart or something like yeah. that, you know, yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, lose so much money that way. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, uh, uh, and, and there are different ways of uh, doing this, right? So the traditional way was, uh, Stacy, was you send that abandoned cart email or you send that abandoned form email, right? Yeah, if yeah. you're getting a lead capture. But now what you can do is basically you have 
like you can personalize images, right? Because the AI can generate the images on its own, right? Yeah. So you can basically mash up all the products they saw, right? And create like a good GIF file that just goes into the email that, hey, these are the products, you know, they yeah, look yeah. how good they look. And if you buy in the next 60 minutes, <laughs> we'll also put in this as well, right? So yeah. that conversion rate shoots up, right? Oh, so yeah. Yes, because, you know, visual cues are so important for humans, you know, if you oh, can visual, yeah, if you're browsing a product and if you can visualize yourself, how well you would be using that product, you know, it's very easy to sell you then, right? Oh, uh, yeah. It's, yeah, so so I, I think if, you know, with this new technology, right, you know, generating images, like just by describing them and all that, right, I think, uh, it, it, you know, if, if people use it the right way, I think it would improve their business by quite a lot, you know. Does, does your company provide those type of services where you could generate the AI um, images like that? So uh, we don't do it for like, you know, uh, like we don't do it as like a product, but mm -hmm. we can help you do it, right? Okay. So basically uh, if like, you know, so we have enterprise segment, right? Wherein mm -hmm. we, we give a, a lot of help to our, customers wherein we take care of your top of the funnel which is SEO ads we take care of the middle of the funnel and also the end of the funnel right so mm -hmm. as part of that we'll give you if we don't have those tools we'll give you tools that that can do the job for you so oh, we excellent. can yeah yeah we can help there but we don't sell it as a product yet right right I like that a lot and I, yeah. I like people do that when they generate the AI images because it makes you feel special. You know, exactly. I think it should make a consumer feel special and yeah. become more vulnerable to want to purchase the product or the service. It, you know? Exactly. And you know that, okay, they, even if you know that, okay, it's AI generated, you still feel that, okay, it's yes. so special, yes. right? You yes. see what I mean? You know that, okay, this is fake, but you still yeah. fall for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's a it's a great marketing tactic. It's you know? a great marketing tactic. Yes, yes. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. Now I wanted to, I wanted to ask you like when it comes to like you know competing against these big companies and you know right. a lot of times like small owners will feel very intimidated. Like, do you yeah. have advice for them? Like, you know, things that you know they can you know give them a little inspiration on you know how to approach you know and and succeed in this world where we do have a lot of big corporations such as the ones we mentioned earlier and so forth. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, the way we see the problem as is um, when you have big companies, they move slow and they, they don't operate in a niche. When mm -hmm. you're small, you have these two advantages. You can move very fast and you can operate in a niche of a niche, right? So if you capture that niche of a niche and you move fast, I think you have like a big advantage there. You yes. know, the, the big disadvantage that comes in is you don't have the availability of all these like costlier tools like A-B testing or like, you know, gathering data and like running these big servers where you can train your own AI for your specific store's uh, use case, right? But yes. those can be mitigated by tools like ours or like, you know, uh, just like, you know, kind of pooling your resources, right? So, right. um you know that's how that's how you can compete with 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 the bigger bigger fish yeah that's great you know i i feel like it's 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 hard for a lot of small business owners because they don't realize all these tools and techniques are available to them exactly, and yes the biggest thing i hear from people is say i don't have the time i don't have the yeah. time that's a big thing yeah no absolutely absolutely so most of the time, what we see is that smaller, medium-sized businesses, they run around like headless chickens, right? You know, there are so <laughs> many open things, you know, they have to do. Oh, my right. payroll is, you know, still open. My, you know, <laughs> accounting uh -huh. is bad. I yeah. have to get this off. You know, I, you know, we were just talking about a wine shop, you know, we just deployed an AI body there. And he was like late to the meeting by 15 minutes. And he was like, hey, I was hand delivering these wines to my customer. And then I'm coming to this meeting. So you can understand, like, you know, they are in a lot of stress. And yeah. any tools that helps take that stress away is, is very important. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Now, what are some of the services that you provide? Like, can you go over some of the things that you do? Like we've talked about your services, but maybe you could like do a refresher and explain to people all the different things that you do. Absolutely. So we have the uh, user segmentation that uh, converts your anonymous visitor, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we look at the data, we discover different user segments and then go after them using A-B tests to convert them better. That's yes. the first product. The second product is, uh, you know, our AI shopping body, which kind of captures more leads for you for yes. the customers who are still not decided and also helps in customer service, right? Right. The third tool we have is uh, top of the funnel, which is SEO and ads. So we go mm -hmm. after, we analyze your strengths and weaknesses. We analyze your competitors' strengths and weaknesses and go after keywords with high buying intent so that when those visitors come to the set site, they not just read your blog and leave, but actually buy from you. Right. right. And then we have this ad optimizer, which looks at your organic presence, your social media presence, and your... Uh, PPC value combines all of that and goes after, you know, keywords that you don't have to pay an arm and a leg for, and uh -huh. they still can work, right? And then the final product we have is customer lifetime value, which basically helps you capture higher lifetime value customers because, you know, that would in the long run give you more revenue. Wow. Now, yeah. where can people find you? Like, where where can they go to to find you and your company? Yeah, so we are causalfunnel.com, C-A-U-S-A-L-F-U-N-N-E-L.com. If you search on Google as well, Causal Funnel, you will get us there. Um, we are also on almost all CMS, like content mark, you know, management services, like, like you, know, um, you know, Shopify, WordPress, um, uh, BigCommerce, Magento, all these CMS. Um, yeah. We are also like, you know, good, highly rated on Captiva and G2. So we have five stars and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the best uh, place to get to get in touch with us is just come to the website, causalfunnel.com, and then just say hi and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll help you there. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, before we go, can you like um, summarize in a couple of turnovers, um, you know, something that you'd like to emphasize the listeners about the conversation we had today that, you know, important factors that you really want to, you know, make the listeners understand? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's very important to look at your data and then make decisions based on that. Do not go with your like, you know, intuitions or opinions. They are, they are correct sometimes but they also take you to a path where, you know, you would spend more time getting to a successful strategy, right? So data-driven decisions are always measurable and anything you can measure, you can improve. If you can't measure something, you can't improve. And that's exactly. why data-driven decisions work because you can measure it and so you can improve it. Uh, the second uh, point I would like to make is that there are tools out there that are going to help you and it's, it's very important that you be on top of all the developments that's happening in AI. For example, you would become a better email marketer by you know, you know, generating these images which are highly personalized for your end user. You would yeah. become a better customer service person by using these AI bots that you have. You, you would become a better content writer with chat GPT and all that, right? right? So it's very important to be on top of these tools, especially for a small and medium-sized business. Yeah. Yes, I, I agree with you because there are so many times, like we were mentioning earlier in our conversation, that you know, um, people have you know thought that you know their their, their audience was interested in this, and then they yeah. they got the data back when they actually went and and you know had a company like yours, you know, look and see you see yeah. you know who the audience was, and it was completely different. Like you know, yeah. it was completely different. Like they thought you know it was holistic products, and mm -hmm. these people were interested in gardening. You know, so yeah. it was like totally two different worlds, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really important to do that stuff. Well, you know, Avi, this has been amazing. I, you know, I really enjoyed all the information you provided today. I think it's so important because I think a lot of people don't understand this, but you approached it in a very simplistic way. And it's, it's, it's a great company that you have and, and, you know, funneling, you know, from my own experience, I could not do it by myself. It was, you know, as much as I yeah. am computer 
oriented. It takes a lot of time and it is, it is a difficult strategy. If you're not fully aware how to do it, it, it it's, it's a lot of work, you know, but if you have people that help you and, and have a program and it makes it very simplistic and easy to follow, it, it can change your world. It can change your business. It really can. Yes, it, it, it does. Absolutely. It does. Yeah. And same here, Stacey. It was great talking to you. It was like, you know, the conversations were very free flowing. I, I think we we discovered a lot of interesting topics and, and answered a lot of interesting questions. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And I hope you'll come back on the show. I really enjoyed you and enjoyed everything you had to say. So I, I hope to see you soon. And thank you so much for coming on the show today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Stacey. Same here. Bye. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.